President Barack Obama's top campaign issue, as he predicted, has not been easy. His ambitious goals have left him at times at odds with many Americans, as well as members of his own party. One person who knows how difficult this has been is California Congresswoman Barbara Lee, chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Congresswoman Lee, welcome back to Washington Watch. Glad to be with you, Roland. Uh, it has been a crazy, crazy week. Uh, and so Democrats have been back and forth because, look, Republicans have made it clear in terms of where they stand. None are voting for this health care bill. Was the critical issue the uh, report released by the CBO, the Congressional Budget Office, that all of a sudden really set this battle properly because folks who were on the fence, who were not quite sure, finally saw the numbers? Sure. I think it's very important to recognize that uh, health care uh, costs a lot of money. First of all, uh, and if we have health care reform, we will end up reducing the deficit. And there are many, including myself, who want to see the deficit reduced so that we don't leave uh, this huge debt to our children and grandchildren. Now, here we're talking about, over the course of, I think it's 20 years, a trillion dollar savings. That's a lot of money. And so for those who were narrowly focused, I mean, for many of us, it's a moral imperative. But for some, it was a fiscal issue. And so for those uh, who saw the fiscal issue as being primary, I think the CBO scoring was very important in terms of moving the votes. One of the things that I, I heard from the White House this week, they said, look, no more deal cutting. They said we learned our lesson uh, when it came to the deal cutting we saw with the Senate in terms of the, the so-called Louisiana purchase, what happened in Nebraska, things along those lines. Uh, and for you, in talking to other Democrats, uh, you mentioned moral imperative. Has it frankly boiled down to, look, either you're going to, you're going to be for this thing or against this thing as opposed to all the dancing, you're trying to get your own side deal cut? At this point, absolutely. And let me say, uh, these side deals uh, that were beneficial to only one member of Congress didn't make any sense. Uh, most of us did not support that. But what's important is that uh, we get provisions, and we did get provisions in the bill, that cover at least 31 million people. And that was extremely critical. When you look at the disparities provisions, which the CBC, the Hispanic Caucus, and Asian Pacific American Caucus, we got those provisions in, established in an office of my minority health services, and expansion of community clinics to the tune of $11 billion. You know, we've got a lot of provisions in that will really cover the indigent, the middle class, and bring health insurance costs down. And so special interests, uh, no. Uh, you know, we did everything we could do to make sure this bill cr uh, covered the broadest amount of people and made it affordable and accessible in terms of our health care system. Uh, you already have Republicans who are plotting the next step. They are anticipating this actually passing. Democrats Democrats getting the 216 votes. The vote likely would take place uh, Sunday afternoon. Uh, and then you know, you have states who are saying they're going to sue the federal government. Uh, so the battle clearly is not over. Are you, are you hopeful that you will see entities who begin to organize, galvanize, and mobilize people on the local and the state level to understand that, that, that frankly, if it passes and it's signed into law, you've done your part federally, but they also have to stand up locally because that avalanche is going to come. Sure, the battle is not over. However, I think when people see the benefits of this reform package and see how they will be covered and how their insurance costs will come down, then I'm sure that's going to uh, take the wind out of any kind of uh, movement there is at the local level. People are uninsured. They're desperate. They're hurting all over the country. And when they realize that this is going to help them, they're going to wonder why in the world all of the lies and distortions and what really is uh, the motivation for the, the uh, push to try to kill this bill and now to try to stop it at the state. People before, aren't going to tolerate Before that. I get the jobs, one more question on the health care. I have a section uh, of this show called Call Them Out. Uh, in this week on Tom Jordan Morning Show, I called out, frank frankly, Alabama Congressman Arthur Davis uh, because he's voting no against it. Um, you talked about that moral imperative. I want to go back to that because what bothers me when I hear members of Congress talk about, well, I need to keep my job or I'm running for another office. And so Congressman Davis said that's not why I'm voting against it, but frankly, people are saying you, it's because you're running for governor of Alabama. Uh, how do you feel when you make a decision? Do you sit here and say, well, let me be more concerned about keeping my job or, frankly, make a difficult decision where I might lose my job, but it benefits people in the long term? 
We have to make these difficult decisions. Healthcare in America has been a privilege for a few. Now we are about to make it a basic human right for many and finally come into the uh, industrialized nation's realm. Uh, and so we have to take moral stances against cert uh, for certain uh, mm -hmm. issues and against certain issues. I was against uh, going to war uh, against Afghanistan. I was the only one who voted against that because that was wrong. It gave President Bush and any president a blank check to use force, and I just didn't think that was right. We have to take stands when we really believe in something and when it's a matter of conscience. And I think for most, uh, health care uh, as a basic human right, this is a moral issue and it's an economic imperative.